Welcome to writing your first CLN plugin. My name is Chris Guida. Um, this is going to be a, uh, what's that? You're super loud. Oh, I'm super loud. Oh, All right, hello. Hello, better? All right, don't wanna deafen people. All right, yeah, so this is going to be um, a slightly different um, workshop from what I've seen so far. Um, we are actually going to build a plugin. Um, everybody in this room is hopefully uh, here to write some code, and we are going to write some code. Um, so I'm not going to just, I'm going to talk for like a few minutes, and then basically um, I'm going to just kind of set you guys loose in the replit, and um, I'm going to help you work through the tutorial. Um, and I, I built the tutorial, it's very easy to follow through. Um, anybody with any development experience at all, uh, even actually even if you don't have developer experience, you should be able to work through this, this tutorial. Um, so raise your hand if you're ready to write some code. <laughs> all right, cool, most of you, all right. Cool. Um, you know, if you if you if you if you're feeling intimidated, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave like uh, most of this hour uh, to just ask questions, and I'll walk around and help you guys do the tutorial. Um, all right. So first, we'll just talk about what a CLN plugin is. Um, actually, yeah. First, we'll talk about what a CLN plugin is. Um, just to kind of give an overview in case you don't know what the CLN plugin is. So I'm really excited about CLN plugins because um, I think they're a very easy entry point into Bitcoin and Lightning development. Um, basically, uh, Bitcoin and Lightning development can be very intimidating and uh, it, it's hard to kind of even get to the point where you um, have a PR up, let alone uh, actually are contributing in some way to the ecosystem. And since plugins are self-contained binaries and they have their own GitHub repos, you can, uh, you can basically just uh, build something that alters Core Lightning's functionality uh, in, in kind of a fun or cool way or maybe a very useful way. And you can do this without um, you know, uh, risking other people's money or even your own money. Um, so what is a CLN plugin? It's an executable file. It's started by CLN. It runs as a sub-process of CLN, and we can talk about what that means. Um, it communicates with CLN via the plugins, standard in, and standard out. Um, so basically, uh, well, we can get more into detail about that. It's actually, so I'm just going to run through this. And if you guys have any questions about what anything means, just raise your hand and shout out the question. Um, it can be written in any language, as I said, just as long as it's an executable binary. Um, so this is, this is why I'm excited about it. It's like anybody, like anybody coming in with Go or Rust or Python experience can just write one of these plugins, and then even though Core Lightning is written in C, um, it can still uh, interface with your plugin. Um, so it's an easy entry point for Lightning Dev. It, uh, it can be launched at CLN startup, or it can be dynamically launched. It can be a dynamic plugin, which means that you can start Core Lightning, and then after a while, you can start your plugin. Um, and then the important thing is it extends Core Lightning's functionality, and the three ways it extends Core Lightning's functionality is through RPC methods, event stream notifications, and hooks. Okay, so now we're going to go to the replit. So everybody needs to do this. Everybody, please go to the replit. <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah, uh, so it should be here in day day two. It's not published. So click in the replit, and then. You can publish it. Click into the replicate. Okay, I haven't published it yet. Okay, so sorry, where is the oh published project? Okay. Wow, I can't believe that didn't happen. Uh let's see. Alright, sorry about that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Alright, so now I guess refresh the page. Hopefully it's in here. I see it now. Alright, so what you're gonna do is Make sure you fork the REPL. So, so you're gonna go, you're gonna click the, the title here, writing your first CLN plugin, and you're gonna go to this little hamburger menu here, and you're gonna say fork. And then instead of, it's gonna default the owner of this to the, to the BTC++ team. Don't do that. Fork it to your own user's account. So everybody has a REPL, REPL user account, right? Does anybody not have a REPL user account? You have a confused face, are you? Um, sorry, I'm just looking for the uh, fork. Uh, okay, okay, so uh, if you need help finding it, um, ask somebody else or uh, I can show you. 
Okay, and then you say work rebel. Wait, where did we go for work? What's that? Sorry, you just did it and I didn't like it. Yeah, okay, so I'll do it one more time. So you go here, write in your first CLM plugin. You'll see this, the title, click that. And then hidden way over here in the corner of this menu is this little three dots here. So Chris, I don't think you'll be able to that the you Yeah, let's just start project. Just go to start project? I think you'll see that you'll see Yeah, I don't see more because now I just see delete from that. Do you see your username in here? Wait, has anybody been able to do this? I have. I have this. You're an ad? Yeah, I see No, okay, but don't, so it doesn't, you shouldn't need to be an admin to fork it to your own user. You get that option because you're an admin. Like, you just all start from it. And you switch our project to yeah. yeah, that's the way that you know, my app should go to do it. They should go to the, the team page, because there's a number of the teams, so they go to the team link. Ah, uh, okay, okay, you're right, okay. If they find it, then they'll be a start project button, and they should be okay. Okay, okay so, teams. Yep, we can see plus plus. Okay, and then. And they'll see something very different here, because they'll see just the start project. Okay, and hopefully we can just yeah. search for it. Uh, writing. Okay. First. And there's a bajillion errors flowing down the side. Yeah, yeah, there are. Okay, yeah, don't, don't run the pro- oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how to make that stop. Just close the console. Um, interesting. I didn't see that before. Okay. What you, what, don't, so you don't need the console for this, you just need the shell. Um, you can close Ghostwriter. Um, okay, everybody should be on a screen that looks like this. Yes. Okay. Tell me if you're if you're not ready. Okay. Anybody anybody need more time? Uh, you're good. All right. Everybody's good to go. All right. So, in the tutorial, um, we're going to we're going to walk through the process of building a minimal plugin for CLN. Um, okay. So, here's some here's the stuff that's in the REPL. Here's uh, some ideas for hackathon projects. Um, and then we already looked at this uh, on one of the slides. And yeah, let's just, let's just walk through this first page, I guess. Um, so let's, let's think of some examples of plugins. Um, we have the pay plugin. Uh, so these are, these are built-in plugins, and you can click this. This is a clickable link. <laughs> and this will bring you to all of the built-in plugins for Core Lightning. Um, these are all written in C, and actually, if you read the, the, the README, any file in this directory which is executable and whose name consists of alpha and numeric characters will be automatically loaded with when Lightning D starts. So all of these are actually bundled in with Core Lightning, and they do sort of uh, very important functions in Core Lightning. Um, and they all start uh, when Core Lightning starts. And so, you know, this one is responsible for key sending, and this one is responsible for dual funding. Um, this one, it takes care of your Bitcoin backend. Um, so all of this, most of Core Lightning's like important functionality is actually carried out by these, these plugins that are written in C. Um, okay, now we have the official plugins repo. So this is a different repo. This is called Lightning D slash plugins. These plugins are all written in, uh, well, actually, most of these plugins are written in Python. And these, uh, these use the, uh, uh, the, the Python uh, plugin framework is um, the sort of most maintained uh, plugin platform for Core Lightning. Um, and uh, it's actually used by the Core Lightning team to write tests for um, new functionality. Um, so it's, uh, most of the plugins that you'll look at are written using the Python framework. Um, some of these might be written in, so this one's written in Go. Um, so anyway, so you can kind of just browse through through those. Um, CLBoss is kind of a uh, kind of a outlier. It doesn't. It, I think it just it doesn't have a framework. It has its own framework. It's like this sort of functional like framework written in C It's a really interesting project. It actually is kind of like what LNB um, wanted um, uh, Autopilot to be. You know, it's an automated node manager. Kind of manages your fees, opens channels, closes channels. Um, you know, it manages your funds, manages your, uh, all your routing fees. Um, it does swaps. Um, anyway, very, very cool plugin. Um, and then here are some of the languages and frameworks. 
So um, most of you, if you have uh, little to no coding experience, I would recommend doing the using the Python framework. And so my goal for you all, for, for this, within the next like 40, 50 minutes, is for you to write a, a full um, CLN plugin and run it, and then hopefully publish it to your, to your GitHub user. Um, and we'll get you set up with GitHub if you're not set up with it yet. Um, so we're going to walk through Python. And then if you want to um, build a plugin in Rust or Go, um, you can use one of these frameworks. Um, and I'm slightly less familiar with these frameworks. I'm actually, um, but, I can, but I can sort of help you if you want to do something a little more advanced than using the Python framework. Um, and then here's a bunch of other frameworks that if you're comfortable with any of these languages, feel free to just um, start using any of these. Um, these I have not uh, tested in this REPL, and so you may need to build and uh, you may need to install Bitcoin D and Core Lightning just locally on your machine. Um, if you have Linux or Mac, I can help you do this. Um, okay, so yeah, so um, just please get started with the tutorial. Um, just uh, I guess I'll give you guys like. Uh, well, let's run through this. <laughs> All right, so there's only a few requirements for a plugin. Um, it needs to be a process, again, it needs to be a process that can be launched by uh, Core Lightning. Um, and we'll, I will show you how to do that in, in here. Uh, actually, it's right here. Um, you can launch it using, uh, uh, at, you can launch it at startup using the command line or in, a, in the config file. Or you can do it using C, uh, Lightning CLI plugin start, and that's if you have a dynamic plugin. And then there's there's two things that your plugin needs to do, otherwise Core Lightning will kill it. <laughs> it needs to have a response to the get manifest method, and that's going to look something like this. And the frameworks that we're using, the Python, Go, and Rust frameworks, will take care of doing all of this for you in the background. You just need to sort of uh, munge a couple of variables. And then uh, the next thing that your, your plugin needs to do is it needs to uh, respond to the init method. And so the init method is going to pass uh, all of the options that your plugin uh, wants to the plugin. And then your plugin is going to send a success response. And then if any of this doesn't happen, then Core Lightning brutally kills your plugin. Um, so basically, the, the frameworks that we're going to use are going to make sure that our plugin doesn't get killed. Um, and then now the plugin is running normally, so any plugin can do stuff. All right, so let's do this exercise. Um, so can everybody see hello world.py? Anybody not see hello world.py? Okay. Um, I've copied it in both places just for redundancy's sake. Okay, now uh, here's a bunch of shell commands. Uh, I'm going to just do this, but I. Um, Encourage you to do it too. Um, sometimes Replit will uh, spontaneously restart. Um, so uh, if that happens, you will need to re enter these three commands. So just keep that in mind. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to make our directory for Bitcoin reg test. We're going to run startup reg test. And we're going to run start LN. And if, if you guys, pop, pops up, just close it. And if, oh, yes, and if the web you pops up, just close it. We don't need it. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> just close it. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we should have two lightning nodes running in reg test mode. So we'll do L1 CLI get info. We have orange monkey. And we have, for completeness' sake, we have L2 which is our second lightning node. And this is United Gopher. Obviously, you guys are going to have different random aliases on all of your machines. OK. Um, now, we're going to run this hello world.py file. Um, are you guys, is everybody following along? Have you, have you gotten your, your lightning nodes started? Does anybody not have their lightning nodes started? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. I will. I will wait until you guys are done. And if you get stuck, just let me know. Okay. Cool. I don't see what 
page in that tutorial <coughs> that I'm supposed to do for here. Okay, yeah, so scroll down to the bottom and it'll, it'll, uh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are on the, the, what page is this? We're on the plugin lifecycle page and we're at the bottom where it says exercise, build a bare minimum plugin that conforms to the above requirements. So this is basically a plugin that runs <laughs> and that's all it does. And we're going to kind of incrementally add things to it. Uh, and hopefully we'll get through this. Um, the people who are, okay, who is, um, who's sort of an experienced developer? Like, who, who um, is familiar with Go or Rust, I guess is a good question. Okay. Okay, you guys, um, you might just kind of, kind of, kind of run with this, this tutorial. It has everything that you need to build a Python plugin, and it also has a sample Rust plugin um, in the Rust plugin uh, uh, folder. I don't know if you saw that. Um, but that will build if you do cargo build, and then you can run it uh, as a lightning plugin like, we, like we're doing in, in here. Um, so feel free to just kind of you know, branch off and do your own thing. And what I, my goal, again, is just to have everybody with a functional plugin. Um, Python is just the easiest, um, but uh, everybody uh, can, can do this sort of at their own pace. Um, okay, so if we want to look at the log, we can do L1 log, and we can, this is, it opens in less. Um, less is a program that views files. We can hit Shift G, and that will uh, put us to the end of the file. If we would like to tail the log, we can do that. We can do tail minus F uh, temp uh, L1 reg test log, and that will sort of follow our lightning log. Um, I didn't put that command in there. Let me know if you guys need that command again. Um, you can always open another shell if you need uh, two. Shell windows, and then there you go. So you could do like L2, you could do your second lightning node. Uh, oops. Uh, so. Oops. Okay, so uh, you know I have this this shell I can use for uh, my second node. This shell I can use for my first node, etc. All right, so moving on, uh, let's do RPC methods. Okay, so oh uh, yeah, I guess viewing the log is sort of the the deliverable for that first step. Okay, so now we're going to add a RPC method. Um, all right, is everybody good in the back? Everybody following along? Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna add an RPC method to our, um, to our plugin. We're gonna add a method called hello. This is how you do it using the Python framework. Um, and just put this anywhere before this plugin.run statement. So I just paste it in there. And then we're going to stop our plugin and start it. Uh, because it's dynamic, <coughs> so we can do that. 
Yeah, the, the, the dollar sign PWD thing is What's that? The, the, the plug and start. Yeah, it is not. Oh, you yeah, hide. Okay. <laughs> I never started it, so that's why that failed. Okay, so let's. So now we should be able to do L1 CLI. Hello. Okay, and we get hello world. So you guys seeing seeing this RPC command working? All right, cool. Has anybody uh, not gotten this to work yet? Okay. We're still in the working directory thing is Yeah, the PWD, because it's running it relative to the template folder, PWD doesn't work, so you have to do the absolute map. Okay, interesting. Uh, it works for me. Um, Yeah, so the command that I gave you with the stop and then the start will actually fail if the plugin isn't running. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, just do just do this start command uh, if the plugin isn't already running. And you can check to see whether the plugin is running by doing m1 cli plugin list. Yeah, same and your, so your plugin should be right here. And this, that, is, so this is running from a temporary directory, and so when you do pwd, it's doing print working directory in the temporary directory, not like the root. Right? So you have to do the absolute path. So just in your terminal, just write PWD, and then use that as the absolute path to get where you want to go. Okay? Let me, okay, this should work if you... So let's... Okay, but the PWD didn't work. Correct. So what happens if you say PWD? So, for example, we did just this. So you have to like PWD it. Invalid argument. Copy the use of the I wonder if it's because you've got a different slug there. Uh, anyway, okay, yeah, so if you're having problems um, starting your plugin, um, just do PWD. Uh, you know, your, your, plugins, your plugins path is this. It's the, the path that you're in, which is home slash, slash home slash runner slash running your first CLN plugin. And then if you, uh, uh, you're going to have your own username after there. Um, you're going to potentially have your own username after there, and then slash hello world .py. And that's going to be the path that you need to run. So has everybody, has everybody been able to start their plug? OK. OK, and then has everybody been able to add an RPC method to their plugin? Anybody, anybody still struggling with adding an RPC method? OK. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't Don't do stop because that'll fail. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that command will only work if your plugin is already running. Uh, so, okay, let's move to the next step. Okay, yeah, so the next step is to test your plugin, is to test your RPC method. So you can actually uh, give it this, give it an argument, okay? So, uh, you know, one useful thing that RPC method can do is it can, it can accept things from the command line. Um, so, as you can see, it will accept, you know, an argument uh, that will change the behavior of the method. So now it says hello Chris, because I said hello Chris. Um, you can also try hello Chris and stuff. And notice that this causes an error um, because our, uh, our function here only accepts one argument. Um, so if you put in too many arguments, then, you know, it, it just, it doesn't like that. So, uh, can, you, can you do that hello Chris again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we did these. These checkboxes don't work. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, let's move on to options. So going a little slow here. All right. So let's move on to options. So this is just one line that you can add. Uh, and just put this before the plugin dot run. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow your plugin to take a command line argument on when the plugin starts. Um, and so uh, that affects the operation of your plugin. And so we add the option. Oh, and then we also need to change this line. Okay. Uh, so where it, where it says reading equals hello, now we're going to say we're going to make this. Uh, we're going to make this reading depend on uh, this option. Um, so, okay, so where it says greeting equals hello, we're going to just replace this line with greeting equals plugin dot get option greeting. So what that's going to do is it's going to take that option when the plugin starts up and it's going to use that as a reading instead. So we're going to stop our plugin. And then we're going to start our plugin with a value in this option that we just added. So the way to add command line options uh, with Lightning CLI is we say uh, tack dash k, um, which says you know, use keyword arguments. So keyword arguments are where we can say we can specify which argument we are uh, we are passing. So we can say sub command equals start, plugin equals that, and then greeting is this option that we just added. So we're going to run this. Okay, so greeting equals a crazy. So what is that going to do when I run L1 CLI hello? Does anybody want to take a guess what this is going to say?
if it's kind of the requirements are a lot more stringent because again, uh, Core Lightning is actually going to block until your until your plugin returns from the hook. That's why it's called the hook. Um, okay, so hooks are considered an advanced feature um, because it relies it, Lightning is relying on a plugin to tell it what to do next. So just be careful. Um, so in single mode, um, basically your plugin will say, "I am the only plugin that can respond to this hook." And if any other plugin tries to respond to this hook, um, that plugin will get killed. Um, so, and then in chain mode, uh, this is um, kind of what I mentioned before, where you can have multiple plugins that respond to a, an event in a particular order. And um, so you can specify this before and after array um, to say kind of what, uh, what order you want everything to run in. And if Core Lightning, when it's launching your plugin, if it can't sort of figure out uh, an actual order to do this in, it will just kill your plugin. <laughs> um, so it has to be a sort of valid order um, that's, that's, that resolves to an actual order of plugins. Um, and here's some more information about possibly crashing. So your hook will say result continue. Uh, if it's kind of just, that tells for lightning, okay, I'm done, uh, you can have control back. Um, and the, I kind of already talked about this, but basically yeah, notifications are asynchronous and hooks are synchronous. Um, uh, for both single mode and chain mode, only one plugin may return a non-continuing response. So then that way if you have multiple plugins responding, they don't conflict with each other. Okay, so let's add a hook. So we're going to add a hook on the HTLC accepted event. Um, so we're gonna copy this. I'm going to add this again. You can just add this here before the plugin dot run. And then, uh, okay. So, can anybody just quickly describe what this handler is going to do? Just anybody. Just, just throw it out. It's very easy. It sleeps for 20 microseconds and then uh, it just returns the. A JSON that says result. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it takes control. It prints out a log that says on HTLC accepted call. It sleeps for twenty seconds, and then it returns control. It's back to back to Core um, So what we should expect when we run this is we should expect to see this line. Then we should expect to see nothing for twenty seconds, and then we should see Core uh, Lightning sort of continue processing. So yeah, so we're copying this. We're pasting here. Uh, we're also going to import time so that we can do our sleep. So we're going to put this at the top. Make sure you do this. That's very important. <laughs> or else it will crash. Uh, let's do. Let's start our plugin. Uh, oh, okay. So we're actually gonna we're gonna start this on node two. So we actually don't need to stop it because uh, we're not attaching it to node one. So. L2. So now we're going to run the same plugin on node, node number two. So now we're running our plugin on node number one and on node number two. Um, okay, now we're going to do this fun command that Dusty wrote called fun nose. Um, and what this does is it uh, mines 100 blocks and then sends some of the funds to your nodes and then it creates a channel between your nodes. So see how easy Core Lightning development is? All everything is all taken care of for you. Sometimes you have to wait for things. I have to wait. Why are we shell just restarted and now I don't have access to it? Yeah, okay. Um sorry. So so yeah, so Replit will do this occasionally, we'll just restart. And when you do that, you have to run those three commands again. You have to run uh, the maker command, the yeah. it's just start right the shell command. because of like browser reloading, right? And so when you do that, you have to redo the environment variables. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm sure there's probably a better way I could have engineered this, um, but you'll just have to when when that happens when Repl restarts, just run those three commands again, and you'll be you'll be back in. Uh, which so at the very beginning, uh, I'll show you. Um, Oh, I see. Oh, I see. 
So at the very beginning, you'll see in plugin lifecycle. Okay, so these three commands here. If your if your replit shell restarts, just run these three commands again, and then you'll be back in business. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that's a, a limitation of, of Replit that I just was unable to work around. Okay, so um, once you run the fun nodes command, now you have a channel uh, between node one and node two. Node two. Uh, we'll just do list and list channel. Okay, so now we have this channel between L1 and L2. Um, as you can see, I have uh, a bunch of stats. Uh, let's see. I actually don't see where it says R, R balance and your balance. I guess it's a different command. Anyway, it's all on our side. Um, it's all on node one side. But okay, so we've got our hook. Uh, let's switch over back to the. Okay. Get this. Okay, we started our plugin. We funded our nodes. Okay. So now we're going to create an invoice from uh, our second node, first test. Um, you can ignore this warning um, and just grab this bolt 11. Um, and then you say L1 CLI pay, and then you paste your bolt 11. OK, now what did we say is going to happen? Remember, we said it's going to pause for 20 seconds. <laughs> So as you can see, even though we have reg tests and our nodes are directly connected like on the same file system, uh, we're, it's going, core lightning is going to hang and the method is not going to finish until our hook finishes running. Um, and if you scroll up in the logs, which I should have done earlier, but... So after the, after the mix restarts, do I have to reconnect my node 1 to node 2? Uh, if, yes. I mean, well, so you don't have to, if you're doing the hooks part, are you doing the, the, hooks, the hooks step? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for that, you just need to, um, you need to run the, the start island, and then you need to run fund nodes. Um, so you'll need to do, uh, it doesn't actually matter what order you do this in, but you'll need to start the plugin again on uh, the second node. You'll need to run fund nodes again. Um, so. Basically, yeah, when you do that, it just kind of gets rid of your lightning nodes. So because they're reg test nodes and this is fake money, we can do this. You can just kind of destroy your lightning node and just rebuild it uh, for every single step if we want. But OK. So this message is kind of hidden. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This is the hardest part of this tutorial, is finding this log message. So we got uh, um, 
on HTLC except it called. We should see that. Uh, yeah. So on HTLC except it called. For some reason, this shell is getting cut off. Um, I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, that's the message we're looking for. So our hook ran. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys got this far, congratulations. Uh, this is officially a, a plugin that you can run. Uh, obviously, it doesn't do much. Um, but as you can see, like um, ho hopefully, you can see all of the possibilities of this. Um, again, uh, so we can look at all of the possible hooks. Uh, let's see. OK. So we just did on HTLC accepted, but you know we can do a peer connected hook. We can do commit revocation, dewrite, uh, invoice payment, open channel, um, channel two. That's a V uh, two channel opening protocol. So tool funding and splicing and things like that. Um, sign RBF HTLC accepted. So this is the one that we were using. Uh, Anything for like bolt twelve um, maybe. Let's see. Offered forward event. That probably would. That I don't know enough about how Bolt Hill operates, but I'm sure there's. I'm sure like HTLC accepted might might get kicked off. Uh, uh, this one actually might work. Onion messages. So Bolt 12 uses Onion messages, so you might be able to like intercept those um, to see when the uh, fault thing is happening. Uh, that's a good question for like a core like dev. Um, but okay. So now uh, I encourage you to um, experiment with adding, uh, sort of changing this code a little bit. Um, maybe change the name of your method. Uh, you know, do something different. Uh, if you if you if you're familiar with Python, um, you know, just kind of uh, what I did. I, I made this. Um, so here's an example. Go plugins. Uh, so uh, in the in the course of learning how to write plugins in Go, uh, I decided to just write a little command line. Uh, thing and go. Um, I guess we're kind of running out of time, but uh, so I encourage you to use this this Python framework that we were just using. Uh, also, there's CLN plugin, which is the Rust framework that does basically a very similar thing. Yeah, Rust. Yeah, yeah, Rust. Yeah, Rust is the correct language. You can hold your tongue, Julius. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's an example. Uh, Rust plugin that does kind of basically the same thing. You know, it, it does a has a peer connected hook. It has a connect handler. Uh, has a test method. Um, has some options. Um, so yeah, let's take like the next. I don't know how much more time do I have, Cody? Is this is that it? Uh, thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you for coming to my uh, B2C plus plus talk. <laughs> And yeah, and, and definitely, you know, come to me. And if you guys uh, want to do a CLN plugin for your hackathon project, just come to me, you know, and I'll get you set up.